All right. Um, okay, great. I want to uh, uh, bring the Word of God to us this morning. It's going to be the, the theme that God revealed uh, to me. It's amazing. Let me, when I explain to you how God revealed this to me, uh, it's going to really uh, mind-blowing, you know. Uh, so I'm going to share this to you. What's our focus? Uh, what do we want to pay attention to this year? All right. So let me pray. Come. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this new year. Thank you that it is you who has given us another year. Uh, though last year there were ups, there were downs, whether personally or for uh, the nation and the world, but we believe you have been faithful. You have seen us through. Even we have sung it earlier, the song. And this year, we believe it's going to be a greater year. Lord, it doesn't matter how long is a journey as long as we are led by God's glory. And so you will lead us just like how you have led the uh, Israelites through the wilderness. You have taught, you want, you want to teach them to really depend on you 100%. This is exactly what we want to learn even this year, to depend on you 100%. And so God, lead us, guide us, whether it be personally, as a family, even for our career, our businesses, our church. Lord, we pray that you will reveal more of yourself, of your heart to us. And this morning, as we look into your word, as you have revealed to me what you have called even our church as SIB Life, where we personally, corporately to do, to be partnering with you even this year, Lord, what is of your heart for our nation and beyond. Lord, we want to really uh, get excited what you want to speak to us, reveal to us your word. Bless all of us even as we listen to your word. Help me to communicate clearly, not another sermon, but imparting your heart to your people. So we commit this to you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now, um, so last year, uh, September, one month before the parliament was dissolved, all right? So God revealed to me um, Isaiah 43. And uh, most of you probably have read Isaiah 43 many times. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, uh, chapter in, in Isaiah. And, and so I shared it with our leaders in September when God revealed to me. And then comes one month later, uh, parliament was dissolved. And then, of course, we know what happened. The rest is the whole entire election and, and stuff like that. But what was the thing that I shared to all our leaders? The leaders here are all uh, in our church. They are witnesses. They know what I shared to them. And I tell you, it's definitely got to be God's revelation, all right? Not just to our nation, but to our church, all right? And you don't see church and nation separately, God put the church in, in a particular nation, and as I believe, being a Bumiputra Bronian majority church, in the heart of the nation, KL City. It's not a coincidence, it's not like a, you know, nothing better to do. I'm Pastor Dan going to start a church like that, right? It is a mandate God has given us. So the verse that God showed me from Isaiah, let me show the whole passage, but this is a key verse which I shared with the leaders. Verse 19 See, I am doing a new thing. Okay, thank you. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now, how many of you realize that last year there were just so many new things happened to our nation? Yeah. I mean, don't have to go too far. Just look at the whole political scene. It's quite new, right? It's very new, right? One after another, it's just so new. Even as I'm talking to you later, shortly you'll realize, oh yeah, this is new, this is new, this is new, right? And the interesting thing is, God is doing a new thing. He says, making a way in the wilderness. Now, I'm not talking about Dubai that can make ways in the wilderness. In those times, in the Bible times, you can't make way in wilderness. There's no way you can make way in wilderness. It has to be a new thing, a miracle that God has really, uh, uh, he did, you know, and same thing for streams in a wasteland. Wasteland means dry, tempat yang gersang. How do you make water streams up from there? It's, it's God's doing, all right? That's why later part you see, it says that uh, uh, no one can stop what God is doing. In, in chapter 43, you see that. And so has uh, God revealed things, doing new things, we have to learn to perceive it. That's why it says, do you not perceive it? God is asking us a question. Can I repeat that? God is asking us a question. Do you not perceive it? The word perceive here is understand. See and understand. And so one of the ways you perceive what God is doing is you got to pray together. 
I mean, this thing doesn't drop to me just because I, you know, one day was eating in a mamak store. No, I mean, it's really, you seek God and God revealed to you. Stop living in our cocoons. Stop being, having a complacent attitude or tida apa attitude. And if you read on chapter 43, which I shared with the leaders, the, sec, the last part of chapter 43, after God declared amazing things, the last part, then God rebuked Israel, Israel ill and said that, uh, what they call uh, the consequences of uh, if you do not do has whatever the Lord has commanded and God judged them severely, which we know the history, all right, of Israel. So having God revealed this verse to me, right, if you remember last year, we studied Ephesians and God revealed to us from Ephesians, a new people put on the new self in Christ, uh, our heart being circumcised, all right, uh, and Ezra also we studied last year, that people whose heart that has been moved by God came back and rebuilt the church. You know, let me tell you something, guys. How many of you, you believe in Jesus? Wave your hands, please. If you say you are a Christian, you're a follower of Christ, if our hearts cannot be moved by God, you are in serious trouble. Yes. Let me tell you this. You got to ask yourself, can your heart be moved by God? How, Pastor? When you come to church, you listen to sermons, you go back to the same person. That means your heart is not moved by God. So as I was reading all this, looking at what God revealed to us last year, and then God revealed to me this verse, then I was always praying. So God saying that, Daniel, I'm not done yet. I said, what do you mean? Uh, the new thing I'm doing is not done yet. Okay, so what do you want us to do next? And the Lord revealed this to me. In chapter 36 of Ezekiel, all right? Now, you help me to read this verse. It's a powerful verse, okay? Ready? One, two, three. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Now, a very common verse. We use that, the Lord. So, I also, God, why you review this to me? You see, God is doing a new thing. That was Isaiah 43. But God is not talking about doing a new thing like, example, giving you a new wife. Don't dream. You only marry it once. Till death do you part. All right? You probably need a new heart to love your wife. <coughs> More. Or maybe you say, oh, God, give me a new boyfriend. Well, you break up first, but God, but those simply just break up. In SIB life, we believe that you don't get into relationship to try. No, no trying. Okay? Or that's why some people like now, dating app, Tinder. You, you don't find your life partner through an app. Find life in the church. All right? I'm telling you, SIB Life got amazing, amazing people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Today, we have just seen some here, singles, by the way, all right? Yeah. Singles. <laughs> amazing, beautiful, I'm telling you, you know? So, and then the, or uh, some people like to buy a new car. Anybody, don't raise your hand. You know, buy a new car, a new house, or something like that, all right? Oh, God is not talking about that. Now, oftentimes, when we see the word doing, God is doing a new thing, you know what, what comes to our mind? Oftentimes, we see the word doing, ah, oh, doing more things again. Ah, oh, pastor wants us to do more things again. No, no, no. You got to understand that whole context God is talking about. He is the one who is doing new things. He's not commanding us to do more things. You, you get the difference. So then I ask the Lord, what's so new thing that God is trying to do, Right? God doing new thing, has a new thing, whatever that's going on, is important, but not as important as giving us a new heart, a new spirit. Because God may be doing a new thing, we will miss it if we don't have a new heart, a new spirit to embrace His new thing. You see? So we, our heart must be renewed. That is why, you see, heart of stone is not moldable. Stone, nah, batu, ah. macam mana mau bentuk itu batu? Cannot, So, and, but only the heart of flesh. Heart of flesh means easily shaped. All right? So, and that's the problem with the Israelites at the time. They were so hardened in their hearts. God says, now I'm going to change your heart. I want to give you a heart of flesh, not a heart of stone moldable. You know, uh, let me give you an illustration. Last year, uh, early last year, uh, after two years of pandemic, looking at the screen almost every day, you know, every day and almost every day, like many hours, some of you may need to check your eyes. Huh? I'm, I was, I've been having problems with my eyes a little bit. I said, so easily get tired. Now, incidentally, before, I tell you, before pandemic, I already had 
get a new pair of glasses with bifocal lens. All right, bifocal means uh, when your age is catching up, you cannot see, you cannot see, you cannot read anymore. All right, some of you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, I already have problem with with uh, uh, what I call that uh, Rabun Jao. Okay, short sighted. Okay, uh, it's the opposite of uh, BM the English. Okay, short sighted. And I will never think I have problem with long sighted uh, uh, problem. That means uh, as in, uh, I cannot read. So two years before many, I mean before many started, I had to kind of change, but a little bit, not too bad. After two years, wow, serious problem. I don't want to believe it. I thought, hey, maybe I have eyes problem. Okay, I have to check, lah, no choice. Driving also very easy, get tired. So I went to the opti- I mean the optician to check. Lo and behold, both increase like so much. So much, I don't want to believe it, you know. Now the problem I'm trying to say is this. Having Known your eyesight got problem is one thing. Accepting it and willingly to make a new pair of glasses and pay for it. By the way, lenses is very expensive nowadays and bifocals is even worse. is another thing. You know there is an issue. You know it, but you have to change your heart to accept it. God you know, Israel, you think they don't know me? They know. Just that their heart is so hardened. They're not willing to accept. And so my prayer is God will give us a heart of flesh this year. When God reveals things to us, don't push it away. Don't push it away. Because the more hardened you are, don't end up becoming like Pharaoh, please. Throughout. Okay? So, and I'll give you an illustration before I tell you the, the theme for this year. Uh, I told you last week, uh, if you missed last week's sermon, please watch on YouTube. Uh, I think God revealed something amazing to me. I shared with the church. Were you here? Were you blessed? All right. And uh, we had a privilege, uh, God bless Anne and myself, for a break after three years. We went to Japan, I told you, and uh, a driving trip. So I shared with you last week, um, in Japan, you don't find dustbins all around in the public because they were tra- trained a culture to bring the rubbish home and throw it in, uh, in um, they cannot litter anywhere, right? So, without dustbin anywhere, you can't find people litter. They are on the Marata tempat. So, and if you want to make a, like, a competition, amazing race to find rubbish in Japan, I think everybody will fail. Because it's so difficult. Have you visited Japan before? Right? You, you really cannot find. So, if you first time you go to Japan, uh, this is not our first time. We've been before way back uh, years, before pandemic. You come home, right? You remain the same. You inside the car, you eat sweet, and you conveniently wind down the window and you throw it outside. After experience Japan, you have a problem with your heart. You understand what I'm talking about? If you're in Malaysia, you say everybody does it anyway, right? You follow, you copy, you follow. Everybody does it anyway, right? Okay, fine. But when you go to Japan, you experience, wow! So clean, you know. You go to the toilets in R&R, uh, highway. You cannot smell a single thing. Like, it's so clean. You say, why go so clean, man? So, no, fine. We try cari, cari tulang di taufu, orang bilang. Mana lah tulang di tau punya? Cari tulang di dalam tau Mana lah? Wait, God! Find tau- bones in tau Cannot find, no. So I say, seriously, what kind of country is that? You come home, you'll be so careful making sure that your rubbish is thrown in the right place. If you remain the same before, your heart is having problems. Come back to driving. We love driving in Japan. I told you, right? Driving in Tokyo is safer than driving in Malaysia KL. <laughs> Tokyo has a very complicated road, like extremely complicated and busy, the amount of cars like crazy. If you first time driving there, you're not courageous, tidak berani, you feel afraid. But the, the best part is, in Tokyo driving, you do not need to be fearful about people will bang you. Because Japanese are very respectful on the road. You put signal to change lane, people won't drive faster. One. <laughs> they will let you change lane. You don't see in the roads, major roads, right? Motorbikers, ving, ving, ving. 
it won't happen. So safe. And people don't drive like mad dogs, like over the speed limit kind of a thing. Seriously, even in highway. You look at our highway, sometimes you're scared of people driving, you know. Very safe. When you come home, I told Anne, I, we, we drove there for two weeks. Huh? I came back, I got withdrawal syndrome. <laughs> Seriously, I put signal, huh? I checked, you know. Nobody wants to stop for me. <laughs> you see? So when you come home, you begin to be very concerned. I'm driving. I thought it's Japan, but I become a better driver. All right, then traffic lights, say you're green, right? And then pedestrians, also green. You turn. But also green, no. How, ah? Uh, pedestrian? How can you have two greens at the same time, right? Yeah. All cars will stop for pedestrian to walk. The reason why they do two greens together, just in case there are no, nobody walking through a pedestrian, then the car can just go straight, you see? But all the cars will pay attention. I experienced walking around, walking on the street, right? So you don't even need... Here in Malaysia, pedestrian, you have to wait. All the cars finish, you only walk. What is pedestrian? But here, but in Japan, I just walk only. The car will stop for you. They will stop. So when I drive here, I became more attentive of pedestrian, zebra line. I will stop. Whether it be got lights for pedestrian or not. I have a heart that has changed because I've experienced a very safe place in driving. Children, young kids with the school bags, caps, they go to school in a busy city, they walk around, cause a pedestrian. Here, you are not very afraid. Correct or not? Safe. So I thought, when la Malaysia going to be that safe? I love it. I come home, I say, I want to be one of them to contribute to a safer Malaysia. I have a changed heart, a new heart. When you experience the goodness of Jesus and your heart not changed, you are in serious trouble. It means it's hardened. Stone, not flesh. Are you understanding what I'm trying to tell you? So as, these are all simple illustrations to explain to you. Huh? And so when I was praying, God, what you're trying to tell us in this, I believe, God says, I want you to have a new heart, a new spirit. Based on Ezekiel 36, God says, that is what I want you to focus on. This year, our theme will be a new heart, a new spirit. Everybody say, a new heart, a new spirit. Hati yang baru, roh yang baru. And so, Amen. Amen? Anybody here want to have a new heart, a new spirit? Yeah. All right, visit Japan. All right, so, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, it's amazing. I've got so many stories to tell you about Japan, but, uh, you know, people, it's just amazing, all right? You learn, you learn. You go to a country like that, you learn. You come and you say, yeah, I want, I want a country to be like that. I want to live in a country to be like that, you know? So anyway, I'm not saying I want to move to Japan. I love Malaysia. I want to see Malaysia transform to be world standard like that. Amen, Amen Malaysians? Now, come back to this. A new heart, a new spirit. So I ask the Lord, okay, a new heart, I understand. Say, Lord, what, what do you mean by new spirit? What kind of a new spirit are you talking about? And the Lord says, read the next verse. That was 26, verse 26, right? Now, the next verse in 27, the Lord says, I will put a new spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. What, what spirit the Lord is giving us? I will, I will give you a new spirit, right? And the Lord said to me, it is not any other spirit. It is my spirit I will put in you. My Holy Spirit I'll put in you. What is the purpose? To move you to follow my laws, my decrees, my commands, my words. Not that the Holy Spirit is a new spirit, but that the Holy Spirit given to us to do a new thing in us and through us. See, if God is going to do a new thing and we don't have the Spirit of God in us, you can't perceive it. You'd be so blinded. You see? So you got to have that Holy Spirit to reveal to us what is God trying to tell us to do and you just obey. Obedience. Move us to follow God's Word. Be careful to keep His law. Obey. And so as I was reading this, I said, God, I got it. I got it. Yes. The Lord says, don't stop there, Daniel. Okay, what do you want to do? Read the next chapter. So I, I read Ezekiel 37. And the Lord reminded me when we started SRB Live five years ago. We have just celebrated our fifth anniversary. In 2017, that's where the leadership come together uh, and say that, yes, it's time to birth SRB Live. God actually revealed something to me in Ezekiel 37. And I share this in our 
uh, 10 foundations of life, our DNA. So if you, want, if you want to know more about SIB life, why SIB life? What is our vision? What makes us us? What is our DNA? Will you decide to be part of SIB life? Or not? All these questions you have, you got to join 10 Foundations of Life, which is coming up in February. It's a, it's a discipleship class. Grow yourself and then you know about uh, the church and God's mandate for us. So I shared that, this particular uh, uh, thing. And I want to share it with you to confirm again in five years. Now the Lord says on your sixth year, the next five years, I want to remind you to go back again what I've spoken to you and to push the church to the next level. All right? So in Ezekiel 37, two, uh, sorry, uh, in 2017, the Lord revealed to me Ezekiel 37, you know the story about dry bones. Banyak tulang yang amat kering, the valley of dry bones. And so when God revealed SIB life uh, to me, God spoke that to me, said that, Daniel, I have called SIB life to bring life to places where they need life. So we call SIB life. And, and, and that's the word God gave to me. Uh, and you know, in this text, God told Ezekiel, prophet, to prophesy to the dry bones, and the dry bones came alive and became an army. You know the story, all right? Let me just pick that few verses to show you in this text what God revealed to me, and it really synchronized everything the Lord revealed for this year, a new heart, a new spirit. So in verse 1 and verse 2, the hand of the Lord was on me, Ezekiel said, and he brought me out by what? Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me, he is referring to the Spirit of God, back and forth among them and I saw a great many, not just many, but great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. It means Dead, very dead, dry, right? So, and God spoke to me this. And I want to remind you again, and if you have not heard this before, receive this. First of all, the Lord says that I want SIB Life will be a church that is led by the Spirit. We will be led by the Spirit. We are not apologetic about this. We'll be led by the Spirit. Maybe some churches don't believe in the Spirit, but we're led by the Spirit. If you don't have a new heart and a new Spirit, you know how? Okay, imagine Ezekiel. Chapter 36, the Lord says, I will give you a new heart, new spirit. And if that doesn't happen, there's no Ezekiel 36. Straight away, the Ezekiel 37, the Lord spoke to Ezekiel, I bring you to the valley of dry bones. All right? Look at this whole thing there. If, if that happens, I put myself in that shoe. I'll be thinking, uh, God, why on earth you bring me to the valley of the dry bones? Like, you'll be questioning, I'm not interested. I, I'm not interested. In, in like, I've spoke to many people, my friends uh, who are uh, even Christian, not just non-Christians. They were saying, oh, I think Malaysia is hopeless. Uh, I better move to other country. It's like Malaysia is a valley of dry bones. So people who don't have a new heart, a new spirit, they don't understand what God is doing. You're not born in Malaysia for no reason, you know. When yeah. they say, oh, yeah, Semenanjung, Malaya, hopeless, like, I, I balik Sabah, Sarawak. No! You are, Sabah Sarawak doesn't become part of Malaysia for no reason. Yes. You have to see more than just you are a Sabah Sarawakian. Yes. All right? So, and maybe you're not from Malaysia. God brought you here for whatever years that you are here. There must be a reason why God brought you here. Yes. A mission for you. So, the Lord revealed to Ezekiel. And so, you imagine you, you are there in a the valley. You, you saw a lot of dry bones. And did you realize if you read Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel didn't complain? God wants to show us things, but we must be ready to see and perceive. You either seeing things with the eyes of flesh, or you see things with the eyes of faith. If you see with the eyes of flesh, you will not perceive, you can't understand. But you when look at the situation going on in our nation with the eyes of faith, you can catch what God is doing if you're led by the Holy Spirit. So, and then, the next thing, the Lord says, I want to train. You see, you can be a Christian, you can be a church. Do you know there are Christians that doesn't obey God? (laughs) 
They're Christians. Why are they Christians? Because they just want God to bless them. Do they want to obey God? Uh, I'm not interested. Very difficult. I have to sacrifice many things to obey God. But the Lord says, raise up a church that when people look at, when people talk about SMB life, they will say, this is the kind of people that, the kind of Christian that actually truly obey God's commands. So you look at Ezekiel, back to 36, what did God say? I will put my spirit in you. For what? Not shocks and you know. For what? So that will move you to follow my decrees and careful to keep. Keep means obey my laws. See, when God's spirit is in us, we shouldn't have problem to obey. And let me show it to you in Ezekiel, back to 37, chapter 37. He asked me, he means the Spirit of God asked him, Son of man, can these bones, valley of dry bones, dead bones, live? Uh, incidentally, God doesn't need to ask us questions for information. Why did God ask that question? He knows the answer. God asked the question not for himself. He asked it for Ezekiel. You understand that? But how did Ezekiel reply? If I'm Ezekiel, I will probably say that, I don't think so, Lord. Correct or not? Where, I mean, can you imagine, you bring your children later, you bring your wife, you bring your spouse, you go to Makan after this, you order chicken rice, and the chicken bones is there, and your friend asks you, can these chicken bones live? <laughs> you straight away answer what? <laughs> Which planet you come from? <laughs> You correct or not? You know, if you put yourself in Ezekiel's shoe, you are not talking about few bones, you know. You're talking about a valley full of dry bones, dead bones, and God asking such a kind of like, duh, question, right? Can these bones come alive? How did Ezekiel reply? He said, Sovereign Lord, Allah yang maha kuasa. Sovereign means like He's the greatest and, you know, almighty God. You alone know. You alone know. Can you imagine, Len, Pastor Lenny, you teach Acho <laughs> mathematics. 10 times 56 equals to? You alone know. <laughs> hey, I'm asking you a question. You alone know. But why he answer like that, you see? He asked to test Ezekiel's faith. If Ezekiel doesn't have a new heart, new spirit, people would say, how can it be? Impossible, mustahil. But he said, you don't know. That reply, it means I surrender everything to you. You know it, you just say it, I'll do it. You give me a new spirit to obey you. And exactly, based on that, God replied him this. Oh, this is amazing. He says, Prophesy to these bones. He said, what? You alone know. And God didn't like, okay, I explained to you first before I ask you to prophesy. I explained to you, actually it can be done. No, no explanation. We ask God for, you explain first before you want me to do anything. Why? No need. What did he say? Prophesy. Now, you are Ezekiel. Um, you tell Acho later. Prophesy to these chicken bones. You, let's say he said, you give him, order him uh, chicken wings. Mummy, I want drumstick. You finish eating this chicken wing, you prophesy to the dry bones, drumstick will come. I mean, you can't imagine. God just said, prophesy to the dry bones. And Ezekiel, what did he say? In verse 7, so I prophesied as I was. There are no negotiation, there are no explanation needed. God, you explain first. We all like explanation first, right? Don't, don't need, just tell me what I want. You alone know. You said it, I'll do it. That's exactly Ezekiel 36. That I give you a new spirit so that you will obey me. You see? And so he did. He didn't say hopeless or anything. He did. Because why, friends? His earlier answer, sovereign Lord, you only know because you know why, friends. Surrender is a key to obedience. Why are we having trouble in obedience? Why are we having difficulty? Like, okay, come back, let's say your children. Why are your children sometimes having difficulty to obey you? Because they have not understood what does it mean to surrender. Yeah. Surrender means, right, you don't demand your rights. You just let God be God. When God say A, you don't argue. 
right? You surrender. You trust. You cannot surrender if you don't trust. So you surrender, you trust. You have problem to obey. We have problem in obedience because we don't know, because human beings have a serious problem. We don't like to surrender, to lose power, to lose control. We come out from our mother's womb. Right? Do you know that babies like that one come up? Their hands. We die also like that. Whole life, we want control. God says, surrender. Then you see the miracles. You know, when we, uh, during MCO, I've shared this before, some of you may not know, when God told us to do our project life, where we bought laptops, we sent it to Sarawak. Actually, it's quite crazy, you know. Nobody in their right mind, in small church, we are all like trying to figure out how to run the church in, in that situation and financially, whatever. But when the Lord spoke to me, you must do this. You know, 150 children ended up being raised for 500, 200 children. You read the, the, from the anniversary booklet. How in the world we do that? I mean, I'm almost like put myself in Ezekiel's shoe, you know. I saw, uh, as in dead, dry bones with all the children are not having education because of no uh, digital devices. There is a prophesy. So, okay, by faith, we went ahead and we did it. Why? Because I surrender. I said, God, if that is your will, you better show up, man. Otherwise, we can't do it. And we did it. You look at Journey of Life, Christmas Surrey. When I look back, I says, how did we do that? Huh? I honestly tell you, I don't know how we did it, you know. How did we do that, no? So when, when remember Pastor Wagner, he was asking those of you who were not there, he was asking, uh, can us, all the SIB Live people stand up? You remember in the Kunching High School auditorium? I mean, like, how many people you can count with your hand and your feet? All right? How many people stood up, right? They said, wow, so small one in your church. Why? Because everybody else actually got involved. That means it's like we have the whole church, like almost a majority actually involved, you know, and then the one who comes to be audience are actually our friends, our guests. So I said, how, how did we do that? I don't know. It's God. Because we surrender. I said, God, if that is your will, we do it, you bless people with it. And we have people. Even the ones that you don't think they will actually respond to Jesus, I can't give you too much details. You guess lah, huh? <clears throat> Responded. Praise the Lord. Yeah. How did we do our Christmas tree project? Remember, we raised a fund to help the Lahadatu children. Yeah. When the Lord asked me to do that, I said, God, this is another crazy idea. I mean, if given a lazy pastor, don't want to do that one. All right, so say, God, okay, I will obey. And uh, I want to thank you. This is the kind of church I love pastoring. You know, remember I said that 131 children we help, and every weekdays when they go to the, to the center for, for their school, we feed them, and the budget was three ringgit per meal. All right? So, and to do that, uh, we need to raise about 95, 96 uh, thousand for that, which is very big. Honestly, I have never done that before. It's the biggest I've ever done it. And in our church, it's many percent of our income. I say it's impossible. So we aim for three. Actually, three, I know it's actually, it's, everything's so expensive nowadays. Even chicken egg, how much you can eat now? How much you can eat? Now, if you go, got mon no money to buy chicken egg, the best way is red chicken. All right, so, and, uh, uh, so what happened is that uh, I said, God, how? And we did. You know, you know when, you, when you obey the Lord, I like it. God always surprises. All right? People outside of our church heard about this. Not that I go intention. They just don't know how they found out. They also want to contribute. From that three ringgit per child, 95,000, we have received now raised 140,000. So God says, Daniel, so much small your faith. Three ringgit, chicken egg was not enough. So what do you do? God give us more. Now I've increased it. We can go for four ringgit per child per day. Better balanced food. All right? And, and we have some more. See, something... I didn't think about it. Why? Because I'm not a cook, so I, I didn't even think about it. You need stove, gas, cooking, utensils, 
you need to buy plates, cups to feed the children because they don't have all these things in the centre because they never give them cook, cook food because we're going to uh, hire their local people they are, they are so they give them uh, some income, the Ibu Tunggal, to, to be chef. Bless Lao, they are all local people. So I say, Lord, thank you. Because we, after four ringgit, we still have some extra we can buy. So we are helping two centres, stove, gas tank, whatever lah. Okay, all the cooks, you know, I'm not a cook, I don't know. All right, so, and God knows what I've missed out, which I, I didn't calculate it, by the way. What I'm trying to tell you, when we surrender, when we obey, God will surprise us. Amen? Amen? And thirdly, God will use us to speak life into what is dead. God will use us to speak life into what is dead. So, what did God say to Ezekiel? After he prophesied the dry bones, the dry bones to, 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 to come with tendons, everything, flesh, but he's not breathing. He said, what? Now, you breathe. Uh, I mean, uh, prophesied to uh, the dry bones, I mean, the, whatever flesh you come uh, form now and came to life, whatever it is, and they stood up on their feet as a vast army. You know, you know the story, I won't go into details, huh? so, so that's the brief life, uh, it's prophesied life into them. 2017, when we started, God gave all these things, right? And in December 2017, uh, we haven't, of course, started our church yet because we officially moved to our place, which is the previous one, in April. To the, December 2017, we haven't got found that place yet. We are still trying to look for locations at the time, right? If you remember, those of you in our church uh, from then on. Our, uh, you know, Planet Shakers Australia, they came here, to di- they did a concert, an event, a conference. So some of our young people went. I didn't go. I was not around. So, and then this preacher from Australia, all of a sudden, as he was preaching, he called up, he said, uh, uh, is there Daniel Tan here from SIB? Specific. Names are more. All right? Uh, any, uh, so, of course, I wasn't there, ma, but our people were there. So, and then, then he began to speak. He said, I want to prophesy over to you that your church will be like the prophet of Ezekiel, that you prophesy to dry bones and breathe life into them and they will come alive. Do you know anything? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And so they came back, student told me, Pastor, you know, this is what he says. Like, wow. I said, that is God's confirmation, even before we started, that this is the calling that God has for us, that we will bring life to what is dead. Like Lahadatu, for example. All right? And, and many more. Incidentally, some of you don't know, last year we helped a school in Kapit that is supposed to receive RMT, food, food uh, aid from the government, but because they don't have canteen, they need a canteen to do that. A lot of schools in Sarawak, no canteen because they are uh, borders, they are uh, small school, they eat in a day one together. So this one, no canteen, no, no food aid, uh, RMT. You know what's RMT? Rancangan Makan Tambahan. You know that, right? The government, sorry. I, I can't connect it. The school, no canteen, you don't give food for the needy people. What is the connection that? <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to be hungry lah. until you get a canteen up. Forget it, I'm not going to help you. Anyway, so I hope there will be changes, all right, with this new whatever. So I say, okay, let's get the canteen up. No funds. Remember? Some of you may not remember. So we did. We helped them. They built the canteen. The canteen is built already, by the way. Just only uh, over the December. I forgot the picture to show you. We built a canteen. Small canteen. Not very big. Not many space. Now they can start receiving the RMT already. So what did we do? We just have in the canteen. To me, that's bring life. Simple things like that. Don't underestimate. Amen? So why? Because why God gives us a spirit? Because the spirit of God gives life. Jesus said that in John chapter 6. Anybody here want the Spirit of God leading you this year? All right? And so, you know, uh, remember Pastor Palan, by the way? Some of you do, some of you don't know. He came for our musical uh, in December, purposely came, and also, and uh, so after that, he, he texted me, he said, truly, SRB Life is a life-giving church. 
another confirmation. Because he has been knowing, watching us, and he's, he's very passionate for this Malaysian as well. So I prophesy, church, today that every single one of you will be a life-giving follower of Christ in your life. Amen. Come on, receive it, say amen. amen. I prophesy, truly, the Spirit of God will live in you. Amen? I prophesy that. that. God will use you, God will use us to raise up an army. Amen. All right, like what happens in Ezekiel. All right, and uh, 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 bring life to your family. Amen. Bring life to your workplace. Amen. All right, to your, to your kampongs, you know, to, to your schools, your classroom, wherever, you know. Yesterday only we, I, we, we do anointing, we pray for you, right? So do that. they will be amazing, all right? So everybody say a new heart, a new, heart. A new, spirit. new spirit. Not based on what Daniel Tan said. Must always be based on the Word of God. Amen. I'm very careful with this, all right? And so, remember this? Again, come back to this verse. I'll put new spirit in you for what? To move you to follow my decrees. Be careful to keep my laws. In other words, if we don't do the second part, it's a very clear sign we don't have the Spirit of God in us. So when we receive the Spirit of God, and I pray today you will, we follow the Word of God. So what does it mean? A new heart, a new spirit. And the Lord says, Simple. Very, very quickly, I showed to you so that you know what is our focus this year. Number one, a new heart, a new spirit in worship. Based on the Word of God. Romans 12, the Lord says, Therefore I urge you. Therefore means before the first 11 chapters, whatever Christ has done for you, Paul says in Romans, Now I urge you, please, brothers and sisters in Christ, in view of God's mercy, semua yang telah Tuhan lakukan di atas salib untuk kita, we already take communion this morning. Now, what is your response? Offer your bodies, yourself. The word bodies here, not just flesh, but mind, soul, spirit, everything, has a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper what? Worship. The word worship here, let true or, it means serving. So, if you have a new heart, a new spirit, you offer, you will want to worship the Lord. You have been transformed. You want, to, you want to give your best in worship to God, whether it be, let's say, on Sunday morning, you wake up early, on time. In fact, early, getting yourself ready. A new heart, a new spirit. But if you remain the same, then no new heart, no new spirit. You see, so, and honor God in your giving, your serving. You have not learned how to, how to worship the Lord with your giving. I, my prayer, God will give you a new heart, new spirit to learn to give to the Lord. Learn to serve the Lord in whatever capacity that you can. One hour a month, do it. Two hours a month, do it. Don't say, I'm so busy, I can't even give God one hour. Then why should God give time to you? You have to check. In prayer, prayer is a form of worship. Make time for our we pray every Friday, 8.30. Don't think, oh, already got new thing, God is doing new thing, no need to pray. Already. No, no, no. Come this coming Friday, I will tell you how serious it is if we don't pray. Come. And then, life groups. Do you know? Do you know? You actually dishonor God if you don't connect to the body of Christ. You know why? I need you. You need her. She need you. We need each other. Right? My body need my, need my legs. My body cannot say, legs, you can be chuti, I'll be alright. <laughs> Correct or not? Yeah. When I go and eat, my hands, my mouth need my hands. You can't be eating like that. Correct or not? When I'm reading, yes, you use your eyes, but my brain needs my eyes. I mean, you understand what I'm trying to tell you or not? Yeah. So you can't be saying that I'm, I'm a cool, I, I have Jesus, I, I'm, like, I'm just watched from YouTube. Selfish. We need each other. And how bodies, do you see plural there? Do you see? Do you see pl plural? Jamak? Jamak, right? That's, that's worship. When you do not learn how to 
connect to the body of Christ, you're actually dishonoring God. Seriously. All right? And then, first thing, everybody say, worship. worship. A new heart, a new spirit in worship, and a new heart, a new spirit in witness. In Isaiah 43, which I told you just now, God revealed this. Part of those things God revealed to me that God says, since you are precious and honoured in my sight because I love you. How many of you know that God truly, deeply, really love you because of Jesus? All right? We've done communion this morning. And He says, because of that. Not because you are good. Because God didn't say, because you're so good. No, no, no. No, because you are very clever. No, because you are very talented. No, because you are a very rich church. No, no, no. Because I love you. So I will give people in exchange for you. Nations in exchange for you, for your life. That means when we learn to surrender of our lives to God in worship, God actually will use us to bring more souls into His kingdom. Amen. Do you know that is the more important business than any money you earn in your business? Right? So, and then, in verse 10 and 12, twice, when God said something once is important, when twice, uh, you better pay attention, man. He says, you are my witnesses. No, I say, uh, God says to you today that you are my witnesses. You know how powerful is that? So God wants to make us His witness, succeed. And you know what? In Matthew the last words of Jesus to His disciples. Therefore, go and meet disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. You can't teach people to obey if you yourself don't obey. First. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This, how many of you like God to be with you to the very end of the age? Do the first part first. <laughs> Correct or not? Yeah. Right? So wherever we go, you don't worry, God will use you in your workplace to witness, to be an example. I told you I love to take grab now, you know. God will be with me to the very end of the grab. Destination. Okay. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Never mind, I have no time for that. If you missed my sermon last week also, I shared about if Jesus has a New Year's wish. I told you what was important for Jesus if He has a New Year wish. It's similar to what I'm talking here, but witness in what sense? Evangelism, we reach souls. We will be training all of you how to evangelize. Okay? Stay tuned. We will share with you more. We want to equip you. Jesus equipped His 12 disciples, so we follow the same. We equip you more, not that we didn't do, but now we want to be very, very even more intentional to train you, equip you, so that we know how to tell people about Jesus. You want that? Yeah. All right. And then uh, missions. We are a small church, but we are very mission centric. Do you know every year, this is something God surprises. Same thing with last year. 50% of our expenditure is to missions and welfare. And we are, we, are, we are happy with that. We, we, you know, we just obey. We, I didn't count like, okay, God, okay, no, no, no. We just, whatever the Lord laid upon our hearts, we get involved in the Bible, we get involved. And the idea of this, wow, God, thank you. Thank you for making sure that we live by the Word of God, not for our own whatever entertainment, whatever it is, you know. So, or what our, and, and the Lord is amazing. He just uses us like that. And I want our church to continue to be like that. All right? the, more, the day we, we lose that, we better shut down. Top All right? If you get KFC, what do you find to eat? Chicken. Fried chicken. All right? Not just fried. You must eat the original KFC fried chicken. If you eat the spicy one, hey. Yeah. The spicy one, the spicy one is not the colonel, colonel, Sanders or Sanders, you know, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> it's not Colonel Sanders recipe. Yeah. All right. So you want to eat, you must eat Colonel Sanders recipe. That is the original. Don't become copycat original. All right. Okay. Anyway, coming to this. Can you imagine one day you go into KFC, you can't find chicken. You can't find the original KFC chicken. You better close up. 
Brother Closure. Same for our church. We are, next year, by the way, we are going to Lahadatu, lining up. We have two missions trip. We are going to reach out even more to the stateless children program there and their parents. And then we'll be running a, a, a teenager's camp, reaching out. We will be bringing a medical team there. We will be bringing a... Okay. Do we have doctors? No, no, no. God will send. All right, so we will... If God will send, I'm telling you, trust me. When the Lord laid this on us, uh, He will surprise us. God will send, all right? God will send, all right? So we just commit, you know? And then, uh, and I have a privilege now this year, I'm mentoring the PPPs, the Mananjong people. So we, will, we want to push. We want to really see God's heart for reaching out souls. We want to be part of it, all right? Of course, without discipleship, remember Matthew 28, disciple them, not make them converts. So witnessing is never complete without discipleship. All right, so we are committed to that. We will talk more about discipleship later. All right, things like that. So, new heart, new spirit to be a witness. All right, everybody say witness. Yes. And thirdly, new heart, new spirit for welfare. And we continue that. Dry bones means hopeless. When people are in need, they are hopeless. Do you know that? You don't. You can't tell a hungry children study hard la. Doesn't make. Doesn't jive. You can't tell a hungry. You feed my stomach. How am I going to go to school when my stomach is empty? You see? So, and that is why I share with you when we do this, uh, uh, this is one of my favorite verse. I always rem- remember this. Uh, that's why my Christmas is very different ever since God revealed to me that Jesus said this, when you give food to one of these, you give it to me. All right? So he said, one. You only give to one person, you already give to Jesus. We are giving to 131 children. So every weekdays, we are giving to Jesus 131 times food. Wow, Jesus can grow very big. Okay, so, you know what I'm saying? Are you following me on this? And I wish we can do more. Whatever the Lord revealed to us. And not just to Sabah Sarawak, perhaps to our vicinity. I'll review more again, because time, as we unfold it step by step, we're building a church to have a heart for those that Jesus has a heart for, compassionate for the people, all right? So why? I tell you, it's time for a love and gospel outbreak. We already had a COVID outbreak. Okay, can I just pause it for and listen to me carefully, huh? Okay, how am I going to share this to you? You know, it's very serious when we are talking about young people the young generation are rising up, being influenced to have an extreme thinking in race and religion. Okay, I hope you are understanding what I'm trying to say here without me revealing too much. You know? What is the color of traffic light? Red, amber, and green. What is the third color? That's what I'm talking about. All right, so. What is the third color? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Are you catching what I'm talking about? You are very smart people. Okay, ask your friend. You know what I'm talking about? If you don't know, ask your friend. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? What's the color again? Ah, that's what I'm talking about, all right? <laughs> don't think politics can transform a nation. It is love and the gospel of Jesus Christ can transform the nation. If you and I don't do that job, Malaysia will go down the drain. You have to. That's why I like taking grab. Okay, so. (laughs) You see, don't I? Ask a friend. Like, do you come ask? Pastor, I'm going to take grab. Okay, anyway. And that's why I like to go to places which a lot of churches don't want to go. All right? Now, Lastly, a new heart, a new spirit, can I ask worship? Workplace. So we have what? Worship, witness, welfare, a new heart, spirit in our workplace. You see, you don't go to work just for a paycheck. And I show it to you what matters to Jesus. If Jesus has a New Year's wish, this is what he wishes to do. You look at this, Mark chapter 6. Wherever Jesus went, villages, cities on the countryside they brought the sick out to where to where 
So those times, their marketplace is on the street, lah. All right, not in the office, lah. I mean, workplace. The people make make a living out of their, for their life. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. Where did Jesus go? Marketplace. Where did Jesus go? Where did he do his miracle? Where did he pray for people? Where did he preach the gospel? They said, that's Jesus, ma. No, no, I show it to you. Paul, Apostle Paul, the man who, who rejected Jesus, the man who killed those who followed Jesus, when the Lord turned his life around, you look at what he followed Jesus to. He said, he, he was Paul, huh? reasoning in the synagogue, yes, he go to the church, and the god foreign Gentiles, both, yes, the Jews and the Gentiles, that means the, 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 the Christian and the Gentiles, right? And in the, where? How often? Every day. Every day. Anybody go to work every day? Except Sunday, of course. You do. A new heart, a new spirit. You look around your workplace, you got to look at them with a different lens. Like me, have to change. Otherwise, I'm, I, I'm blind. I cannot see. I will be like having accident when I drive. Cannot read anything. Got to change your lens. Amen? Amen. We're an influencer. So, a new heart, new spirit for what? Come on, you read everything here. One, two, three. A new heart, a new spirit in worship, in witness, welfare, and in workplace. Amen? Amen? And let me tell you, as I close here, God has given us a national mission. We are just a simple, ordinary, small church, but with a national mission. And I want to show you as we close about this national mission is when um, Isaiah 43. Remember? Come back to my Isaiah. Remember? That was September, the Lord revealed. October dissolved. Darlingman. And you know what happens next? I'll show it to you. This is a verse. Part of the things God showed, which I shared with the leaders, as God says, don't be afraid. Sometimes we look at what's happening in the nation, you feel afraid. The Lord says, I'm with you. You're afraid to speak to people about Jesus? Say, I'm with you. To the very end of the age. But look at that, look at this. From both the east and the west, I will bring you together. And then, later verse, which I show you, I will make you a witness. Wait a minute. Both the east and the west, I will bring you together. Let's show you something first before I take you to the spiritual senses. Look at Putra Jaya now. Never in the history of Malaysia, you have so much east Malaysians are running the country. Correct or not? God is doing a new thing. Right? Let me bring you now to the spiritual sense. East and West, God will bring them together. Where? Okay, you look around people next to you. Are you together now here? Are you together now here? You together in that place? Where? It has to be a place. And I believe it is the heart of the nation, which is capital city. That's why God's vision mandate for SIB life is very unique. You tell me, in Semenanjung, in Kel City, which Bornean church run an English service like us? Which Bornean church have an English service and majority of people attend that English service are Borneans? Look at people next to you, in front of you. Are they Borneans or not? And the best part is, we are welcoming even the locals. Look at somebody next to you. You ask them, are you local? Lah? And the best part is, we also have Europeans. And the best part is, we have actually have a member attend our YouTube service. I think he's there now, uh, Patrick. He's, in, uh, he's a French working in Sorry, he's a Polish working in, in, in France. 
and he was saved. Uh, and then he was attending our YouTube from there all the way. He flew all the way here last year. Uh, Pastor Wagner baptized him. You know, he broke my record. You know, he baptized a European I've never done before. And he just came here for holiday and he went again. I mean, tell you something. God is doing a new thing. How, how, where do you find born church impact lives like that all over the world? So, and I want to prophesy over to you to catch it. There is something unique God is giving us that is bringing East and West together. You are not made a Sabahan for Sabah only. You are not made a Sarawakian for Sarawak only. You are made a Malaysian for the entire nation of Malaysia. So don't see yourself as Sabahan only. Don't see yourself as Sarawakian only. See yourself, God doesn't just give us a piece of state. He gave us the entire nation. That's what He's interested in. I can't be a prime minister. A Chinese. <laughs> but you can! So you have to see God is giving us a national mandate. A national mandate, a national mission, a kingdom, a mission, and a generational one as well. To pass it on to our next. Don't see you come here, you study, you finish, you pack. When people come here for study, how are they going to be like? You see? So we are building something for the future. And for that, you need a new heart and a new spirit to be able to perceive the new thing that God is doing. Amen? Hallelujah? You excited for that? Come on, let's bow our heads. We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for trusting us with, uh, with big things. Lord, we are small, but God, we have a big God. It's not the size of a church. It's the size of our faith in our big God. So we thank you for, for the honour, the privilege that you entrusted us, that you opened our eyes to see that our life is not just about a study or a job or getting married or give birth. No, we have a bigger mandate for your kingdom. When we, when we win in our personal life, we are not yet winning. But when we win in the kingdom of God, we are truly winning. And so we pray as we embrace this, Lord, that you have revealed to us a new heart, a new spirit. That's our prayer. We want that, God. So as, as we do that, church, as we allow God to touch us, give us a new heart, new spirit, you say, I, I want that. Pastor, I want that. I want that. I, I'm not going to make an altar call to the front here, but wherever you are, make that place as the altar. And say, God, this year, I want a new heart, a new spirit. Put your spirit in us. I, I have problem, trouble learning how to obey you, but I'm willing, God, to humble myself and let your Holy Spirit teach me and help me to obey. Because I know blessings will always follow obedience. And so this is why I want to learn this year, Lord. Give me a new heart, a new spirit. Help me to embrace Lord, whatever you reveal to us in worship, in witness, in welfare, in workplace, God, we want to be part of what you're doing. So you say, that's me. Can I ask you to put your hands on your heart for a moment? Because new heart, new spirit. Ask the Lord, give it to you. Do that. Put your hands on your heart. Talk to Jesus right now. Say, yes, Jesus, yes, Lord. Give me a new heart, a new spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you talk to Him right now. Give me a new heart, a new spirit. I want that. As you're doing that, you know, I'm going to worship the Lord. And, and this song, just allow the Holy Spirit to touch you. And as you do that, you say, yes, yes, I want a new heart. With your hands on your heart. And we're going to worship before I pray for you. You also respond by standing wherever you are and worship Him with your hands on your heart. Holy Spirit, rain down. Come on. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down, oh comforter and friend, how we need your 
touch again Holy Spirit Holy Spirit rain down Yes, we want you Holy Spirit rain down Let your power fall Let your voice be heard Come and change our hearts As we stand on your word Holy Spirit Rain No eye has seen God is doing a new thing No eye has seen Oh yes No eye has seen Put his spirit in you. Yes, Lord, rain down. Rain down. Let your power fall. Let your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, you rain down right now upon your people. Come on, you want it, you receive it. Come on, receive it. And in faith to know that, Holy Spirit, God says, I will put my spirit in you. Receive it. I will put my spirit in you. And you will obey me. And you will see, I will do a new thing. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. I will bless your family. I will bless your career. I will bless your businesses. I will bless your studies. I will make you my witnesses I will bring people to you that you have never expected before I will exchange lives for your life oh receive it in the name of Jesus Christ give us a new heart a new spirit God a new heart a new spirit to do your kingdom mandate even for our nation hallelujah hallelujah come on receive it come on receive it say thank you Jesus for your spirit Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, one last time. No eye has seen. No eye has seen. Come on. No ear has heard. No eye can do what God has in store. So open up. Open it wide.
Rain down. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We know you will lead us and teach us to obey. We know you will use us to speak life to what is dead. Whether in our school, in our workplace, in our families, Lord, open our eyes to see, to perceive the new things you are doing. And give us a new heart, new spirit, God, so that we are able truly to speak life to, into our situation. I want to proclaim life right now, church, in your situation. If you are going through something in your life, raise your hand before God. I want to speak right now live. There is a resurrection right now happening in your situation. Where the enemy meant for death, God speak life, bring life into your situation. So God, we receive that. And we know this year is going to be a victorious year, no matter what the world says. Those who are in Christ Jesus, Lord, you have given us the victory. So I release that to your people. Bless you, church. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the shalom always guide you, envelop you, watch you through. In every situation, no harm can come close to you and your family and your children because God's own right hand is upholding you, embracing you, protecting you. And wherever you go, God will make you a blessing to the people around you. If you believe it, receive it in Jesus' name and say, Come on, give the Lord a praise. Alright, praise the Lord. Somebody say, a new heart, a new spirit. Tell your friend next to you, I have a new heart and a new spirit. Bless you, have a wonderful week. Now, uh, coming Friday, yeah, come join us for a week pray if you can, you know, and uh, God bless you. And uh, if you're going home early for your Chinese New Year, happy Chinese New Year. Alright, I won't give you ang pao. Okay, God bless you. Bye-bye.